What's up? It's Jan back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. Let's play a game today called Will I be able to film this book haul before my camera dies? Okay, so I have this big pile of books, right? The thing is, I didn't buy a single one of them. As some of you may know, I have been on a book buying ban since the end of July. I knew that I was planning on moving at the end of October, so I just like refrained from buying books. And then my plan was to break my book buying ban on October 5th for the Addie LaRue like Barnes and Noble anniversary edition or whatever. But your girl is still struggling with money, so that's probably not gonna happen. All of these books were were either sent to me by publishers or their arcs from like work or y'all sent them to me. <laughs> y'all are so freaking sweet for helping me not break this ban. Like I was shook every time I got some of the mail. There was a week where I got like 14 books and I was like, incredible y'all are incredible it means so much to me don't ever feel obligated to send me anything but like if you do just know that i greatly 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 appreciate it like it makes me damn near cry every time i open book mail so just so you know i appreciate every single one of you and i do put the little notes if you get something from my amazon wish list i do washi tape them into the books so i remember who got me what so yeah let us just start with the books that i already mentioned on my october tbr actually so i'm not gonna go into any type of synopsis just check out my october tbr if you're curious but yeah the first one a lesson in vengeance by victoria lee this is my book club pick for the month of october for the full moon book club all the information will be down below as usual and this is a YA fantasy it came out in august so stoked about it oh no yeah there's no way i'm gonna make <laughs> My camera battery's already flashing. Okay, let's just move along. And then I have Velvet Was the Night by Sylvia Moreno-Garcia. This is the Brujas and Books book club pick for October. And this was gifted to me by Christina from Christina's Chapters. Thank you so much. And then I have All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. This is my buddy read with Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads. Day Trail from Day Day Reads on Instagram got this for me. And then I have an arc from work, Last House on Needless Street by Catriona Ward. Like a haunted house situation. So excited to get to this in October. I'm just gonna go in the order that I see the pile, okay? So next I have Away by Darcy Little Badger. This was given to me by Hannah from Hannah's Recent Reads in person when we met up in Wisconsin in July and it was such a good time. I'm obsessed with this. Like, look at this naked cover. There are wolves. Wolves are my favorite animal if you didn't know. This is a middle grade. No idea what it's about, but I heard it has beautiful writing. I'm assuming it's like magical realism. Next, I have A Special Place for Women by Laura Hankin, who was the author of Happy and You Know It. And this was given to me by Daisy. Thank you so much, Daisy. I was so stoked for this one. I saw this randomly, I think on Goodreads recommendations or something. And I know it's witchy and like, maybe it's not witchy. A club that only certain women can get into. Women only social club where the elite tastemakers of New York City meet. Where billionaire girl bosses mingle with occult obsessed bohemians. The more Jillian learns that bad things happen to those who dare to question the club's motives. Oh, I guess it's not witchy. I don't know, but I'm excited. It sounds like rich people drama and I love books that are set in New York City, so love this for me. And I've heard no one talk about this yet. Then I have The Midnight Lie by Marie Rikoski. I just love this cover. First heard about this book from Olivia Reads a Latte like last year or something. Ashlyn from Ashy Flow on Instagram got this for me just randomly. I was so shook. She also got me The Bone Houses, I believe. Yeah, she also got me The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. I have no idea what any of these are about. Is this a, like a fairy tale retelling? I don't know. Epic LGBTQ romantic fantasy all I need. Yeah, and there's like high society shit. Yeah, I'm ready for this one. The Bone Houses. I heard good things about this, but I have no idea what it's about. I feel like I'm gonna be saying that a lot, per usual, in my hauls as grave diggers. Oh, okay, yeah. The risen corpses are known as bone houses, and legend says that they're the result of a decades old curse. I love me a good curse in a story, so excited for this and it's a cute little floppy paperback next i have one that i've already read in the month of september and it's vespertine by margaret rogerson it's an arc sent to me by isabella from the feminist bookworm on instagram sorry i had to pull that one out of my brain but this was 
Okay, y'all, sorry for the angle change. It's like a couple hours later. Camera's charged, so let's try this again. We're gonna win this game this time. <laughs> I think I was saying how good this was. I gave it four stars, I believe. It has a lot of religion in it, but it's like a good balance of religious talk and like fantasy world building type thing. It almost feels like a made up religion kind of because of all the world building that surrounds the nuns and spirits and everything. So it's really good. Margaret Rogerson really knows how to provide the vibes, you know? Like Sorcerer of Thorns was so good. I wish I got to an Enchantment of Ravens in September, but I didn't get to a lot of things in September. <laughs> but yes, highly recommend. I think this comes out this month. I think it got delayed. It was supposed to come out last month. Next, we have Rise to the Sun by Leah Johnson. This one is from Daisy, so thank you. Daisy actually sent me three books. A Special Place for Women was the third one, but Daisy sent me Rise to the Sun and Satisfaction Guaranteed by Corellia Stetz Waters. This one I've never heard of. It wasn't even on my wish list. Daisy just added it, I guess, because apparently you can do that. This one is a sapphic romance, and it says for fans of Casey McQuiston and Abby Jimenez. It sounds steamy. There's like a business involved. I don't know, but look how stunning that author photo is. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And there's just something about a paperback romance that just feels so nice, you know? I don't know. But Rise to the Sun is a quick YA contemporary about two girls who go to a music festival. I'm pretty sure it's like super insta lovey according to Jesse when they read it for Sapphicathon last month, but they read it in 24 hours. So it should be super quick. I have not read You Should See Me in a Crown yet, but I want to listen to the audio. I don't think I want to read that one physically for some reason. I really like this cover. As y'all know, I love going to concerts and music festivals and stuff. So hopefully I like this one more than Jesse did. <laughs> the next one I have is an uncorrected bound manuscript. So like there's not even a cover on it. It's literally just white marble with black text. And this is also from Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm. So it's called Cold the Night, Fast the Wolves by Meg Long. If I remember, I'll insert the picture of the finished cover here because it's gorgeous it comes out in january on a frozen wasteland of a planet a girl is on the run with a wolf who is born to be a killer but bound to be her guide as they fight to escape ice goblins giant bears and a ruthless leader intent on trapping them both one question drives them relentlessly forward where do you turn when there is nowhere to hide okay so i feel like there's like a lot going on here the chapters aren't too long. Cool, cool, cool. Excited for this one. Hopefully I can get to it before it comes out in January. Next, I have The River Has Teeth by Erica Waters. This one is from my girl Christina from Christina's Chapters once again. She just sent this to me because one day I posted about it and I was like, wow, I want to break my book buying ban for this. And she was like, I'm going to get you this because you're sad and I need to see you smile. And she's just the cutest freaking... Ugh. Get y'all a Christina in your life, I swear. But yeah, this one is sapphic and this is the same author as Ghostwood Song. And this one is a YA thriller, I believe. I read like the first couple pages at work and the writing was just like to die for. So I just immediately wanted to purchase it and Christina did it for me. So thank you so much. I wanted to pick this up for Sapphicathon last month, but that didn't happen. Maybe I'll save it for November Sapphicathon or something because I do want to get to this one very soon because I am craving it. Damn, I could have used it for my butterfly vlog that like barely happened. <laughs> Next, I have We Are Not Like Them by Christine Pride and Joe Piazza. This is an arc from work. This isn't the cover that I saw first when I was planning my most anticipated reads of 2021. It's about two friends, two women, and it's a lifelong friendship. One woman's black, one woman's white, and then their friendship is tested because of like social issues, racial issues. When a police shooting connects them in ways they could have never expected a powerful and poignant exploration of race in america today so i feel like this is going to be a very important read and it's going to have such good discussions and that's why it's one of my most anticipated reads of 2021 when did this come out oh it hasn't come out yet it comes out this month cool good thing i'm not gonna get to it i am excited for this i feel like i have to be in the mood for a friendship story so when i am this is what I'm gonna pick up. <laughs> Next, I have Dracula's Child by J.S. Barnes. So this is another one that got me while I was shelving books at work. There are like letters in here. The chapters are super short. There are diary entries. It's 
thick. I was just in a vampy mood because I put this on my wish list. Like, I think I was missing a dowry of blood for sure. And I was like, I just need all the vampy vibes. And literally, almost immediately as I put this on my wish list, Ruby from Ruby Tuesday with eyes instead of Y's on Instagram got this for me. I wish I had time to read it during Vampathon this month, but alas. We all know I'm already biting off more than I could chew with my October TBR, which will be linked down below. <laughs> next, I have a book I'm gonna read next month for November for a secret TBR, and it is Monday's Not Coming by Tiffany D. Jackson. Sharni from Sharni and Books got this for me, so thank you so much, girl. From all the way from Australia, I just cannot believe that she sends me anything. Like, I bet shipping is outrageous. I don't know. I love her so much. Go subscribe to her if you haven't already. Her and her baby are my freaking favorite mother-son combo. Combo? Duo. <laughs> this is, oh no, that's my birth control alarm. Speaking of Sharni, <laughs> she always calls me out on like my alarm going off. Hold on. Okay, we back. No babies tonight in this household. This is a YA thriller. I've read Tiffany D. Jackson's books before. I read Grown and Let Me Hear a Rhyme. I I keep thinking I've read another book by her, but I maybe not. I've been putting this off for so long, I don't know why. I truly don't know why. Everyone says how good it is, so I think I'm just like scared it won't live up to the hype, but I'm sure it will. I heard it's super disturbing because this girl goes missing and the best friend is like the only one who cares. It's pretty much all I know. The girl's name is Monday, that's hence the title. I heard it's like a super heavy read. I've been wanting to read this for like a year or two now, so I don't even know why I'm like this. this wonderful subscriber named Ashley. I think their Instagram is starmoonchild, starmoonreaderchild, uh, something like that on Instagram. And why did I say on Instagram twice? <sighs> okay. I need to eat dinner. <laughs> they messaged me and they were like, I want to send you this book. Like, what's the easiest way to do it? And then so I just added it to my Amazon wish list once they told me what they wanted to send me, which is Poison Princess by Cressley Cole. And it's the first in the Arcana Chronicles. So it's like, ew, I didn't notice this guy on the back. <laughs> it's based on like tarot card magic and everyone knows how much I love tarot. I have like hella decks right there above me. But yeah, I have no idea what this is about, but I'm just gonna take Ashley's word for it because I'm here for all the tarot magic. And then while we're at it, Ashley also sent me All Our Hidden Gifts by Carolyn O'Donohue. First of all, like, can we just, I just, this cover is like just everything. It's everything. Oh, and the back is a zodiac wheel. So I wish I had time to add this to my October TBR once again, but I think I need to just like chill and save it. I mentioned this when Ashley told me about a book about tarot card magic. I was like, oh, is it all our hidden gifts? And then Ashley was like, no, but here I got it for you anyway, since you mentioned it. And I was like, that is the sweetest freaking thing. I just know this is YA. So Lily disappeared appears after she sits for a reading from this girl named Maeve who found these dusty old tarot cards in the closet. She teams up with a bunch of girls to try to find Lily after she disappears. I don't really want to know anything about it. I already, just based on the cover, I feel like I'm gonna love this book, so. And then I see Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. This one is from Catherine from Cat Reads 247 on Instagram. So this one is like music related. I know Books and Lala read this and enjoyed Enjoyed it, I believe. So, I mean, if the writing is anything like The River Has Teeth, I'm here for it. And this cover is just everything. So, even if I don't like it, at least I have a book with a pretty cover. You know what I mean? Excited for this one. I'm sorry I'm so bad at these synopses. Like, I mean, are we surprised? This one was sent to me by a publisher, by Penguin Teen. They sent me The Girls Are Never Gone by Sarah Glenn Marsh. So, I actually got this as a NetGalley e arc, and then they offered to send me a physical copy. So, this is the finished version, and I'm so happy happy about it. This cover is just a mood. You know? Nomi read this as a NetGalley arc and she said it was okay. She said it was super YA at times. We'll see. Once I'm in the mood for something like YA and dark and like just for the vibes but not the writing, I'll pick this up eventually. But I had to let this one go off of my October TBR because I was just like, okay, if Nomi thinks it's okay, maybe I should just like hold off. Hey, oh my god, ew. <laughs> I'm so gross. 
I'm sniffly. These books are getting farther and farther away from me. Okay, lastly from, not lastly in this haul, but lastly from Isabella from the Feminist Bookworm. She sent me You've Reached Sam by Dustin Tao. This doesn't come out until November, so I was so shook when, the, when I saw this in the box. I heard about this first from, maybe not first, but like I was interested in this book after I saw Renee talk about it. It's about this boyfriend who passed away and then the girlfriend calls and then he actually answers, but like obviously it's not really him. I don't know if it's like her imagination or what, but I feel like this one is gonna absolutely rip me to shreds. So I feel like I have to mentally prepare for this one. Hopefully I get to it before it comes out in November, but I'm really excited about this and I hope it goes by quick cause it's a YA romance, but it's a hard hitting romance. So we'll see, we'll see. When I'm I'm in the mood to cry I will definitely pick this up I have to remember to pick it up before November but not in October you know like before it comes out when does it come out in November November ugh, there's no like actual date oh damn it comes out November 2nd ah okay yeah there's no way I'm gonna be able to read this before it comes out because my October TBR is already yelling at me so hopefully beginning of November I'll pick this up right away this one I'm so excited about y'all so this one's also from Catherine these were more books that I posted along with the river has teeth saying like oh I want to break my book buying ban for this so badly and I'm about to and then Catherine and Christina were like I'll just buy for you like what are you doing no like keep your book buying ban going and y'all are so sweet and I finally have Daughters of Enri in my hands. Okay, I know Jesse and Chanel, I think, put this on my radar when we went live together a couple months ago. And ever since, I could not stop thinking about this beautiful ass cover. Like, I didn't need to know anything about it. All I know is that it's a YA fantasy. There are sisters, I think, by a BIPOC author. So, like, that's all I need. Twins separated at birth. Goddesses who grow up believing that they're human. Okay, hopefully I can keep up with this one without getting too confused. Eventually, I'll read this. I just uh i'm hoping to get to this before the end of the year but i don't i don't know i don't know maybe it'll be a good like january book who knows i screamed when i saw this at work i got an arc of beautiful world where are you by sally rooney i don't know why i'm so excited about this book when normal people wasn't even like a big hit for me until i watched the show and listened to the audiobook i guess now like i'm kind of obsessed with normal people now i really re want to rewatch the show now that i think about it i'm like excited for this but i'm scared to start it because like what if i don't like it and i'm scared to go through the whole like her dialogue doesn't have quotation marks thing again but i know this is about like four people right like four friends they desire each other they delude each other they get together they break apart they have sex they worry about sex they worry about their friendships and the world they live in are they standing in the last lighted room before the darkness bearing witness to something will they find a way to believe in a beautiful world wait that's so like i really want to read this now ah okay november november tbr okay jan okay Next, I have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This one is from a girl, Renee. She sent this to me when I was at my lowest. I was depressed. I was crying myself to sleep every night. I was waking up crying. Like, it was a bad time back in August. But she sent me this along with a self-care package with, like, a candle and hot Cheetos and a face mask and all these cute things. Ah, oh, she's just the sweetest. I'm sure y'all have heard of this one. I am late to the game. This one is always coupled with Truly Deep by Maureen Johnson because it's a YA thriller. I think the girl in here has like a school project and then it's like an actual murder case. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend who then killed himself. Pip, our main character, investigates. So I heard this goes by super quickly and there's like mixed media in here. The third one just came out recently, I believe, and it's called As Good As Dead. And the second one is Good Girl, Bad Blood. But yeah, I'm hoping I like it enough to finish the trilogy, but we'll see. No idea when I'm gonna get to that. Okay, this one is another one that I posted and was like, okay, buying this right now, breaking my ban. And Malka from, ugh, it's like paperback something. Oh my God, I always see, oh my God, I'm so dumb. I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot Malka's Instagram handle. It's also her blog. I don't remember, I'm sorry, but she got me this, The Taxidermist's Lover by Polly Hall. And again, I saw this at work and immediately posted about it. I read a couple pages 
loved it. It gives such creepy gothic atmosphere and the writing is just stunning. And I think it's a story about obsession, about this girl like falling in love with a taxidermist and taxidermy is kind of creepy to me, like actually really creepy. And I'm kind of worried that there's gonna be some grotesque imagery in here, but you know, I'm here for it. It's super short. I wanted to squeeze it in to my September TBR, but I didn't get to it. But maybe this will be good for like a 24 hour readathon at some point. I don't know, probably not October though. I don't know, I don't know. Next book I have is Brother by Anya Alborn, and this is from Haley. Ugh, I, I'm sorry, I forgot your Instagram username as well, but the note is just so sweet. I'll try to link the vlog where I unboxed this and read the note. I just don't remember which vlog exactly sometime last month all i know about this one is that it's a serial killer family and i think the brother falls in love with the victim it's apparently a slasher i heard it goes by super quickly and it's super floppy all right three more guys three more this one i actually ordered before i went on my book buying ban it's from a book box so it came after i got charged and stuff but this is from the bookish box and it's a small business that i saw on instagram and i saw that their book pick this month was the witch haven by by Sasha Payton Smith. So this is their version of the dust jacket and then I reversed it because can we take a moment for how beautiful this is? And the spine with the skulls, the back. Yeah, love. And then come on y'all, come on. And then the end papers and then the pink. Yep, 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 yep. So this is obviously a witchy book. Let's see what it's about because I don't know. 1911 New York City, okay. 17 year old Frances Hallowell spends her days as a seamstress, mourning the mysterious death of her brother months prior. So it's one of those where she accidentally kills a man, ends up at the sanitarium, but it happens to be a school for witches. And then she has a newfound power. I mean, I'm here for it. It seems like dark academia, murder and school are involved. So I mean, that's dark academia to me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm excited for this one. This came out super recently recently as well. That is all. That's from the bookish box. The next one is... Ah, uh, there was no note. I don't remember. Shoot. Vincent and Theo. It was someone who already sent me books prior. Like, I've already mentioned them multiple times in this haul. I just don't remember exactly who because Amazon did that thing where the note was on the invoice, you know, and it wasn't on the little slip of paper. Oh, I wish I remembered. I'll try to find the vlog where I unbox this too so I can give credit to where it's due, you know? I think I just rhymed. Ew. <laughs> but this I saw at work again and immediately added it to my wish list. I love Van Gogh. I have a Starry Night Tapestry. My laptop case. I have socks. I have a shirt. I have a keychain. I went to the Van Gogh exhibit. I have a journal. I have another nonfiction Van Gogh book. I love Starry Night, okay? And this is about Vincent Van Gogh and his brother and it's like super short chapters. It's nonfiction. For there are some letters between them and I high key didn't even know Vincent Van Gogh had a brother so I'm excited to learn about them. Don't know when I'll be in the mood for this, but yeah, I'm excited to learn more about one of my favorite artists. And lastly, we have The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi, and this was gifted to me by Veronica from The Crafty Veronica Reads on Instagram. I didn't even know this was set in France. This is a Filipino author, well, a Filipino and Indian author, I believe set in 1889. It's a YA fantasy. I don't know anything else and I am honestly too lazy to read the synopsis but probably wouldn't do it justice anyway and I'm sure you've heard of this. This is pretty backlisted but I hope I like it enough to continue with the series because I know The Silvered Serpents just came out I think either this year or late last year. Thank you, Veronica. Thank you to everybody who got me anything ever, but you know, particularly in this book haul, thank you. Thank you so much for getting me through my book buying ban, for getting me through my depression phases, for getting me through everything. Honestly, I don't know what I do without booktube. I've said it once. I'll say it over and over again until I die. <laughs> Y'all mean so much to me. You're all incredible. Thank you so much for your support and spending your money on me, spending your time on watching my videos and going to my live shows and reading my book club books and everything you do to support me. Y'all are the realest. <laughs> it means the absolute universe to me. I can't express enough. So yeah, that is my gifted book haul. I don't even know what to call that. Is that what people call it? Still like a haul of books you acquired even though you didn't buy them? I don't know. If you made it to the end of this video, put the um, 
like hands praying emoji because I use that for like thanking people. So it's like a thank you, you know? <laughs> Put that emoji down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope y'all had a great day. Stay safe and stay positive always and I'll see y'all in my next video. Bye.